Hi guys, so I am Erica and I'm going to be um, the host of this channel, if you will, or the creator behind all of it, however you want to say it, um, and it's going to be Erica Rose Knits. So I have been dreaming of this podcast for quite some time because I don't really have any knitting friends in my life that are, you know, as serious as you will as I am about knitting. And um, so I was hoping to build kind of a community here on YouTube and just be able to talk to each other about knitting and give each other advice and encourage each other when we're really wanting to quit projects and things like that. So that is my goal of this channel and I hope that that works out. I will also be potentially, hopefully posting every other week. So I am a stay-at-home mom of three girls. I am also obviously a stay-at-home wife and I have um, a lot of responsibilities. So I homeschool them, I keep a house and all those things. And so I am pretty busy on that front. And that means that I don't have a ton of time to knit, but when I do, I sit down and do it. So I was thinking that if I did every other week, there would be more progress shown, if that makes sense. Otherwise, it's gonna be like, oh, hey, here's the sweater that I started and I've only knit this much. So less exciting. That is my goal. So bi-weekly, hopefully. And on this channel, I'm hoping to share my works in progress, share my finished objects, obviously, because that's always exciting to see, and then also share the project bags that I make. I make project bags for myself, and I also make little stitch markers recently, so that's a new thing as well. Another thing that I do is I am a potter. I have been a potter, and I've sold my work for about five or six years now, I believe right around there. So it's been a time. Uh, Erica Rose Pottery is that, and I have another channel for that and all that business, but I wanted to keep this one separate because I have found that there are potters that knit and vice versa and everything, but I just figured if we did a separate channel, it would just make everything nice and clean and it would just, um, it work out. So hopefully that makes sense and you guys get it. So if you see me looking down, it's just because I'm looking at my notes that I made. Um, speaking of notes, I recently got this and it's called a rocket book. Let's see if you can see that. And it's a reusable notebook. So I do a lot of journaling when I do my devotions in the morning. I do a lot of journaling, a lot of note taking and all these things. And I never know what to do with my journals after I'm done with them because I don't want to keep them. It's nothing that great. Sometimes they're just random thoughts and things like that. So it's nothing that I want to keep. So these journals are really cool because you use these special Frickson pens. If you can see that. And they're cool because these are like heat erasable. So you erase the pen because the this creates friction and it makes it, it's all heated. You can also use these in quilting, which is really cool. Uh, so you just use that, but these ones you actually just wipe away. So you get a wet cloth and you just wipe it away. So it's reusable and I'll link it below if you guys are interested in it because I didn't know anything about it, but I really do enjoy it. So if I'm looking down, that's why. I'm going to go ahead and get started on whips. I don't want to waste your guys' time. We're just going to get into it. And we will start with the smaller whip and the most recent thing that I have cast on. And what I have it in now is my project bag. This is a Holland pouch by Center Street Quilts. This is one of my favorite bags to have for socks because I knit them two at a time. And it's just really nice because it's nice and firm. I use um, foam stabilizer. That's what it is, foam stabilizer on the inside. So this thing is really, it's got really good form and everything. And I like it because it keeps everything nicely in there. I'll open it up so you guys can see. But it just, when you're knitting two at a time socks, it keeps everything really nicely. And this is the medium size that I made. And her patterns are really intuitive. They're very easy and simple. They're my favorite to make. And you can keep your pattern in there, your socks. That's two balls of yarn, so I'm doing two at a time socks. I've got a pair of glasses in here, um, my knitting needle case, and all those things. So a really great pattern. If you guys like to uh, quilt it all and you guys need a project bag for your two time socks, highly recommend this. This is my favorite one. So what we have is not a whole lot. This is kind of my on the go project. So I like to have, I only try to have two projects going at a time. If I have anything more than that, I tend to get a little stressed out and it, it's like in the back of my mind, I have this to do list and it's not something I enjoy. So I try to just have a smaller project that's easy to take in the car and then a bigger project that's more for at home. So sweaters, blankets, things like that. 
Um, and this is what we have so far. It's just a plain vanilla sock. So nothing super fancy or anything. Right now we're just on the cuff. And this is a little stitch marker that I recently made. It's so cute. We just got back from Hawaii and I swam with a sea turtle. No big deal, obviously. It was a huge deal. I was so happy. That was my favorite part. And I only did it like once and it's one of those things I'll probably regret, but I will, I'll go back someday and I will swim with those turtles again. So I made that and I've just got, this is for my husband. And the last time I made him socks, I think I cast on 72 stitches and he said this time that he would like it to be just a little bit tighter because as you know eventually stuff starts to stretch out a little bit so i def decided to do 64 stitches this time and that's what i actually cast on for myself and for like my mom and my sister and everything uh so hopefully it'll keep a, a tighter fit for him and then the yarn is really cool it's mixtape from knit picks and it's fingering weight and then the needle size that I'm using is, okay. so they are Chow Gu Red Lace, and these are the fixed cables. And I believe this is a 40 inch cable. So really big for when you're doing two at a time. And um, it is a 2.25 millimeter, which I believe is a size one. I will, if that is incorrect, I will put a text somewhere correcting that because I could be wrong on that. Uh, so yeah, that's where we're at with those. I'm excited to see how these colors work up. I'll show you guys one of the cakes. So this is one of the cakes. Really fun colors. I really like how it's working up so far. I have realized about myself that if I don't enjoy the colors, I'm probably not gonna enjoy the project. So I'll show you guys a thing that I made for my husband and I told him he's not allowed to pick out colors anymore because I did not enjoy making it because the colors are just not my thing. So that is going well. I'm really enjoying those. The funny thing about socks is I enjoy making fingering weight socks, but I don't enjoy wearing them. So I prefer a worsted weight sock. I don't know why, I don't know what it is about it, but that's just kind of where I'm at. So that's that. And then the next thing that we have is this really, this is a big one. So this bag is amazing. And as you can tell, I went all in on Christmas bags this year because I wanted one for each project and I wanted to be in the spirit and ready to go and happy. So we went with a bunch of Christmas fabrics. So this bag is called the Crafters Tool Bag, I believe. Crafters Tool Bag. Yeah, Crafters Tool Bag. And it is by Can Do Patterns. And it is big. So this is a sweater I have actually. Um, and then it's got all these pockets on the outside, which is really nice for keeping all your bits in and everything. And it's got, so this sweater project part. And then it also has, you know, that much yarn in there. And there's still plenty of room. This bag is the perfect bag, in my opinion, for sweaters. I absolutely love it. Um, I have been trying to find a bag that fits a sweater well, and that one's perfect. You can, the pattern does have an option to add a zipper to the top, and I think I'll do that next time, potentially. I'm not sure because it's my stay at home bag, so it's okay if it's open. I enjoy that. That's the bag. Then we have what is the Miles Jacket by I believe it's Ozetta Knits. Let me let me look at the pattern real quick. This is a paid for pattern. Let's see. Miles Shirt Jacket by Ozetta. Yeah, Ozetta. So Miles Shirt Jacket by Ozetta. I'll show you guys the picture on the pattern so you guys can see it as well. So far, it's been a really great knit. I've had no problems. It's easy to understand. Super cute. This is one of those projects that I'm really excited to own because it just looks so nice. I'm also on a hunt for a pair of pants that are like that color because I want to style it like this, like that light blue denim. So also on the hunt for that. We're, we're going to try to find that before I finish this. The yarn I'm using is Knit Picks Woodland Tweed. I really like Knit Picks. I feel like they're very affordable, but the quality of their yarn is very nice. Uh, they are typically my go-to for um, yarn. I just, yeah, I've always, I've been really happy with their stuff. So this is the Woodland Tweed. Funny story about this. It is, it's so nice. It's really soft. It is 
Aaron Waite, Marmont Heather is the colorway. It's got 180 yards, 100 grams, and it is, I believe it's, let me find the thing. So it's 80% merino wool, 15% baby alpaca, and 5% viscose. Viscose, viscose, one of those two. So I was on nitpicks. I had a gift card from last Christmas, and I knew that I wanted to make this jacket, and I knew that it had to be Aaron weight, and I was looking for a color that was similar to the picture. And so I went on nitpicks, and I couldn't find anything for a couple days. And then I went on there, and this yarn had just popped up, and it was brand new. And I went on there, and it already said that things were sold out. And so I panicked. I was like, okay, I got to get this soon because this is exactly what I want. I know it's going to be soft enough because it's the the merino and the alpaca and I know that it's gonna be soft and good and so I hurry up and I hurry up and bought it. It was between this one and then a darker brown and I'm glad that I went with this one and it was like a panic buy. But then when I went to refresh it, none of them were sold out. So I think it was just a computer glitch. But that's okay because I'm really happy with it. Even though it was a panic buy, it worked out great. And it is really soft. I have found that I do not do well with um scratchy wool at all like i tried the lion brand fisherman wool i don't know how people wear it it is so itchy and like even just if it's just touching my skin it is too much for me i cannot handle it and i want something that i can just you know put on put it against my skin like i have no problem with this at all so i think merino and alpaca is um that's my winning combination i think and then super wash because i've worked with what was it Malabrigo Rios. That stuff is so soft, it's ridiculous. It's It should be illegal how soft that stuff is. That, so I wanna make a sweater out of that eventually too. Anyways, so this is where we're at on this. So far, the construction of this sweater has been really nice. I've had no problems understanding what to do, when to do it. It all has made a lot of sense. And I'm not like a super, advanced knitter when it comes to sweaters i've made two pullovers and one cardigan so i haven't like you know so this isn't that hard if i can figure it out but it's got a really nice detail on the sleeve that looks good and then it's going to have drop shoulders and that's why this armhole is so big so i am working on the bottom hem right now i finally i just got the length that i needed the nine and a half inches and then I am working on the bottom hem. So this has a hemline that is really cool. And it's, here, this shows a picture of it. So if you look, it's got a really nice hemline. I really like that hemline. That was part of the reason I loved it. Hopefully that's focusing for you guys. Uh, but that's what I'm working on now. I'm working on the front left hemline and that's the next thing I'm doing. And so far it's working up really nicely. I've made some really good progress. It's my first time working with Aaron Waite yarn, so that's been really nice seeing how quickly something knits up with Aaron Waite yarn, so that's really nice. And let's see the stitch markers that I made for this one is, and these ones were some of the first ones I made, so they're like kind of big, but it works out for this, it's not a big deal. So it's like a little star sugar cookie, super cute. And then the other one is just this um, cute little cookie with, I need to put the new, I have different clasps for these that I finally got, so I need to put those on. But just a cute little, little cookie with a bow. So yeah, that's working up really nice. I'm really enjoying that. So far, um, like I said, her patterns are really nice. They're really intuitive. I really enjoy it. They're really great. I'm excited to get that done because I really want to wear it, but I'm enjoying the process. So it's not like I need to get it done because I hate it. So that's nice. Sometimes you have those projects that you just aren't enjoying and you're far enough along that ripping it back is almost as painful as doing the project. So you just push through and you get it done. I'm finally realizing in my, my knitting that I want to just enjoy the process. When I first started, I was like, I want to pump these out. I want these to be done soon so that I can have that finished product feel. And I've realized that, you know, the process is just as good. So I want to be a process knitter as they call them. 
and it's been really nice to just like slow down and be like it's okay if this doesn't get done today especially with sweaters because i live in oregon and if anybody's ever been to oregon you know that it is you know it's pretty chilly most of the time you know i'm able to wear sweaters almost year round which is what i love and that's so that works out really well for being a knitter i will say when we went to hawaii i was flabbergasted they have like no yarn stores and it dawned on me I'm like of course they're not gonna have yarn stores it's hot like all the time it was like 90 degrees when we were there and i was it was so sad to me to think that there's not very much knitting that was so sad to me maybe you're from if you're from hawaii and you knit i i applaud you because i could not imagine working with anything except for cotton and like not even wanting to wear it because it's so hot and humid and so yeah, I'm I'm a happy I'm a happy Pacific Northwest girl because I get to wear sweaters all year round and that is my goal in life. All right, so we have a finished object. I have of course had lots of finished object finished objects, but this is my most recent one and it's one that I haven't gifted because it's for my husband. I guess I did gift it to him, but he's not here. I mean, he doesn't take it because he lives with me, obviously. So this is the sockhead hat. And it is a simple pearl, or it's a simple, um, it's a free pattern, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's a free pattern. Um, and it's just a simple ribbed hat. And it worked up really nicely. The only thing, so that's what I was talking about, is that these colors are not my vibe at all. This like green and this weird stripey thing it's doing. My husband loves it, so it's okay. I'm all right with it. But um, like I said, he's not going to be picking his colors anymore. I am going to pick the colors because in order for me to make it and enjoy it, I have found that I need to enjoy my colors. And I actually got that from my mom because she quilts, like she does amazing quilts. And if she's working on a project and she doesn't enjoy the color of the fabric, she hates it. She hates doing it. She can't wait to be done with it. And then she never wants to do it again. And I have found that I am the same way when it comes to knitting. If I do not enjoy the colors, I really don't want to work on it. So I have made a rule that if I don't like the colors, I'm not doing it. That's all there is to it. So that worked out really well. There's the crown and it fits in perfect. I made the larger size and it's got a lot of stretch and, um, yeah, so it was really nice and he wears this running and he said it's really warm and comfortable and he's very sensitive about his head because um, he doesn't like anything pushing on any part of his head. It's very sensitive like that and he said that this has no problem at all. Plenty of stretch on that one. So that's a good one. And then, so that's the only finished object I have that's the most recent thing. And then I figured I would go ahead and just to kind of like add something else to the video because it's a bit shorter. Uh, it's our first one. We're, we're getting it together. We're learning things. Hopefully that's okay with you guys and you guys can kind of uh, watch me grow throughout this process, right? Because that's what it's about. It's about growing, getting better, challenging ourselves, doing all those things. So the last thing I was thinking about is just the next thing I want to cast on probably after I'm done with my socks because like I said two projects at a time is ideal for me it's what works best and I think the next thing I want to cast on and I'm pretty sure you've heard of it if you've done knitting at all is the muscle burrow hat and essentially what you do is you knit a giant tube and then you like fold it into each other so you take the end of the tube and you put it into the other tube and so you've got like a, a double layered hat and it's got a brim, it's super cute, and it looks really interesting to knit up. And I had gotten this yarn from Knit Picks a while ago, so it's kind of, it's stash yarn, if you will. Um, and it's Prairie House, and it, I believe it's made off of Little House on the Prairie, that's what the colors are from, which I totally get that. And I love that show, I've watched it and I love it. And so when I saw this, I was like, I need to have that obviously in my life. And it's a fingering weight yarn and it is 75% superwash wool, 25% nylon. So your typical sock yarn. 
And I was thinking about actually making a muscle burrow hat in this because it does a really cool striping. And I really do like these colors. They're fairly neutral with little hints of, you know, green in there and everything. So I think they would go with a lot of things that I wear. And I thought that this would be really cute. So I think that's gonna be my next cast on for sure. And yeah, so I'm excited about that. Well guys, that's all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I hope that you enjoyed something. I hope that maybe these patterns have been a little inspiring. Like the Miles jacket, I really, like if you were looking for a really cute, I think they're called Schlacket, Shacket, Schlerts, Schlacket. I can't remember, something like that. Does that sound right, Schlacket? I don't know, it's a shirt jacket. There you go. Uh, that is a really great pattern. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I have had no, like I said, no beef with it so far. It's gone really well. And I'm really enjoying making that. And then, yeah, I hope you guys got a little inspiration from some things. And I'm really excited to see what we build here together. And um, yeah, if you have any suggestion for videos, pre please leave it down below and um, you know, comment. I would love to get to know you guys. I'm excited. So thank you guys so much. And we will catch you on the next video, hopefully in two weeks. Okay. Thanks guys. Bye.